Hello and welcome to Gang, Gang that, that Drink. drink. A supernatural drinking game podcast. It's the podcast where we uh, make up drinking game rules for our favorite episodes of our favorite show, Supernatural. We play along as we uh, watch the episodes and then we recap the episodes for you and we tell you how the rules played out. Uh, and then at the end, we tell you what the next episode is going to be and what the rules are for that. That's what we do. That is why we're here. Why we're here is what we're about. We're on a mission from Chuck. Yeah. Um, that voice you're hearing is, of course, Nate McCorder, a teacher and performer at the Neighborhood Comedy Theater. And the voice that you've been hearing since the beginning is Chrissy Lenz, the director and proprietor of the Neighborhood Comedy Theater in oh, downtown Mesa, If only Mesa, there was something Arizona. to proprietor. <laughs> <laughs> I that's one of my favorite. I want to bring that word back. I'm 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 tired of saying it. someone owns a business. They're the proprietor. Uh, I've been reading like some like old books lately, and they keep meant that's a word that keeps coming up. Uh, Ooh, but yeah. old books, fancy, old fancy. Books. I think maybe, not old books. Books about old things, and they use the word proprietor a lot. Okay. Um, anyway, how are you tonight, Chrissy? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be back at it. We took a little hiatus. We're back for what is officially season five of our pod. Uh, so I'm happy to be back. Happy to be doing this very long <laughs> and involved episode. It's such a long episode. But it's a great episode. Like the I second. Mean, I mean, I, lo- I it is one that sticks out in my mind when you said we were doing it. I was like, oh, heck yeah, because like this is just this is a mem- very memorable episode i feel like yeah yeah it is and it's a a good monster and it's a good setting and it's just an right. all around uh it was well acted it's funny it has uh scary moments it's got it all and it's got a little bit of shades of that episode from season 1 or 2 where they put themselves in prison right like right so they're kind of like going back to a little bit of this old formula, but with a new little twist on it. And I thought the villain, yes, villain, excellent, awesome villain, like bad, um, great monster of the week, great monster of the week. But you do get uh, you. I think you need a little context, but I think you yeah. get that through the the then. I think you get that through some other things you can kind of pick. I don't think you have to have watched Supernatural before you could show someone this episode point blank. And they'd enjoy it. I think it's entertaining. They'd enjoy it. They may have a question or two. Yeah. But, you know, it's pretty easy to just accept the weird and roll with it. Accept the crazy. Yeah. We're talking, of course, about season five, episode 11, Sam Interrupted. What are our rules for this episode, you ask? Well, anytime someone says apocalypse, take a drink. Every time someone dies, take a drink. Every time someone says monster or monsters, take a drink. Take a drink for smooching. Smooching. One of my new favorite rules. That's a good rule. (laughs) Take a drink when Sam does an autopsy, which apparently he can do. Your shot or double drink for this episode is when you hear pudding. Pudding. Take a drink if Sam is awesome. Take a drink if someone says crazy. And finally, our longstanding rule, take a drink if someone says gank. Gank. Gank that drank. And those are the rules for this episode. Are we ready to jump into the recap? Oh, Chrissy, I am so I'm ready to jump into it. Like I am intentionally putting myself in a mental mental institution. Yes, I, I am. I am ready to just talk about all the crazy. And we, yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Let's get into it. Let's do Let's it. Get into it. Then. <laughs> Ellen and Joe blow themselves up. 
Ellen and Joe are uh, longtime friends, nay Demon family. Dogs. And oh. there's, yep, hellhounds. And the only thing they can do is blow themselves up. So they stay together and blow themselves up. Mother and daughter, kablooey. That's the first real loss of characters we knew and cared about in this show, right? Like, obviously, Mary at the very first episode, but we don't know her beforehand. It's just the beginning of the, it's the pilot, right? Like, mm-hmm. I guess John? But yeah, like, he's we lost not dad. In, he's not in it a whole lot, right? Like, like we didn't really get to know it. We kind of have like, a, you have a weird relationship with John as as a fan, I feel like. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like these are the first like real side characters that we really care about. Yeah, kind they were one hundred percent good guys. Yeah, so it's like that's a big moment. It's a big moment in the show. It is. It is, yeah. and we're remembering it at the very start of this one. Yes, yes. Um, we hear the rant uh from one of the previous episodes we did that only crazy people hunt ghosts. We're crazy people, Sam. <laughs> from Yellow Fever, right? Um, I'm not or sure not it's from Yellow, Yellow Fever. Fever. Um, uh, which it's from one, one of the episodes that? I recapped. Yeah. yeah, we have done it. Yes. Um, they we see them shoot Lucifer with the Colt, which was supposed to kill him, and literally it does nothing to him. Lucifer is stronger than the Colt. This tool that we had that was supposed to defeat him did not work. Lucifer is still out and proud. All right. Now, <laughs> we're at Glenwood Springs Psychiatric Hospital in Ketchum, Oklahoma. A woman is being interviewed by her doctor. She's afraid of a monster, take a drink, who appears when she sleeps. So she can't sleep. Annie, her roommate, died, but the doctor says it must have just been a suicide. Because there's no such thing as monsters. Mm. At lights out. Go ahead. Oh, this scene just has monsters said like a billion times in it. Well, I only wrote down two. Oh, I think it said like four to five times in the very first scene. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So get your drink ready. <laughs> It lights out at the hospital. There's all these bangs and noises coming from the vent. The screws in her vent begin to unscrew. But as she calls for help, all the other inmates start calling for help, too. She's like, help me, help me. Someone's breaking into my room. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, help me, too. So the nurses and orderlies are just like, they're starting early tonight. And then by the time they finally do come into her room and check on her, she appears to be a suicide. Bum, bum, bum. Title cards, supernatural. Sam and Dean are in the doctor's office now. Dr. Babar referred them. There's some (laughs) kind of ongoing joke about Babar that's happening in in this last bunch of episodes that we're doing. Like season four and five, there's some kind of weird uh, Babar thing happening. Yeah. It's funny. And then the other names are, they, what do you go with, like Eddie Van Halen? And Eddie and Alex, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Sammy, they're trying to get Sammy checked into the mental hospital. And Sammy's like, I'm fine. Yeah, I guess I'm a little depressed because I started the apocalypse and now we're fighting Lucifer with the help of an angel who wears a trench coat. <laughs> and Dean isn't like, he's not evil. He's just high on demon blood. Now, can you please check him, in, check him in so we can get back to normal and start hunting monsters as we travel around the country? <laughs> and the doctor's <laughs> like, okay, you're both getting checked in. You're such interesting cases. Welcome to your new home. Uh, the nurse does a little examination of them, and Dean's a little bit sassy with her. He's like, okay, nurse ratchet, none of your monkey business. And she's just like, okay, sugar. In the day room, they uh, hook up with Martin, who used to be a great hunter who knew their dad. He saved their dad's ass a million times. But now he's just sort of a broken man. Sam says to Dean, you're just sad about Ellen and Joe. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, wasn't that that the 
it, like premise in the prison episode too, where they go to prison where it was like someone that used to hunt with John that they knew about. Yes. Like that's like <laughs> how they hear of these things. Mm-hmm. It's like former associates of their of their dad. I just love that. There's like this network John still has, even the people who are locked up or in institutions can just reach out to the boys. Yep, they can just get a hold of the boys any old time. Yeah. And the boys can just get into and out of whatever the secure institutions are that they've placed themselves within. With such ease. Well, with the, at the end of this episode, they just run out in yeah, their, they just in their um, uh, like robes and stuff. You got to pay extras to get punched, Chrissy. You got to pay <laughs> what? Oh, you got to pay, pay extras, extras to, get, to punched. get punched. Yep, it's true. You got to pay those stunt guys. They're expensive. Yeah. And just have them run out. Just have them run away. Exactly. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah. It's easier on all of us to we just have know, them run we out. We know to they're the going to get away. Like the Impala is around get... the corner. <laughs> they're not going to get stopped, right? Like we, the season's already been ordered. <laughs> we know they're yeah. going to make it to the next episode. We don't need them to fight their way out of this mental mental institution. I keep mm-hmm. combining the two word mental institution. Mental. Um, I don't know what that means. You're going mental. I am going mental. Uh, so Sam is like, it's good for us to take a little break, uh, uh, but also keep busy at the same time because I can tell that you're still sad about Ellen and Joe. And Dean is like, yeah, I'm still sad about Ellen and Joe, but watch me shove it on down and keep going. <laughs> If we were playing toxic masculinity for this episode, who buddy? Who buddy does Dean have it going on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Martin reports that there have been five deaths in the last four months, and they've all been apparent suicides. But he thinks that there's a monster, but he hasn't seen the monster, and he can't check the bodies because he's scared to look at dead bodies now. So he called the boys. Uh, they come and take Martin and Sam to group therapy, but not Dean. The brothers are so dangerously codependent, they need a little bit of time apart. Ted, in group therapy, Ted said, there's a monster. And then another girl chimes in, yeah, yeah, there's a monster. It's just mm-hmm. like on the X-Files. And he's like, "There's not stop helping. It's not like that. It's a real monster. And the doctor says there's no such thing as monsters. Dean... Yeah, the- yeah, hits Go a ahead. lot. Hits a lot. Monster hits a lot. Yes, it does. <laughs> In this whole episode. It's a big one. Uh, Dean gets a hot shrink. They have this really fun scene where there's like a quid pro quo Q&A where they're going back and forth like really rapidly. And she's asking him if he sleeps, how much he drinks, if he's ever had a relationship. And he's asking her about cold spots and sulfur smells. So he's trying to get at the root of the monster and she's trying to get at the root of his problems. And she ends that little scene with, let's talk about your father. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, Sam and Dean are like, let's solve this and get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. I don't like it. Uh, what does he get, say? He got theraped? Yes, thraped. Yeah, I didn't like that. Me neither. Uh, but a woman comes up out of nowhere and kisses Dean. So they're smooching. Take a drink. Yep. And he's like, maybe this place isn't so bad and- after all. And Sammy's like, "You, dude, you can't hit that. And he's like, I'm so torn. I'm torn. I'm so torn. And it's like, Dean, chill out, buddy. <laughs> like, it's a mental hospital. What do you think? She- what? Huh? Yeah. Huh? She's not okay. Right. At night, the boys sneak out to talk to Ted, who saw the monster. Uh, But he, when they finally get into his room, it seems that he's hung himself. So they go do an autopsy. Take a drink. Sam's doing an autopsy. Uh, The brain has been sucked dry through a pinpoint behind the ear, which is a really, really gross scene. Um, they like stick a Q-tip in the hole and it goes all the way up to the, where the brain is supposed to be. And like Dean just stands on the lookout while Sammy is sawing the top of the skull off. And then he's holding this little, little brain that's like 
like a an old dried up piece of sponge it's which is a really actually gross scene. probably closer to what a brain kind of would should look like at that stage after death like without just well, he being just sucked died up that dry. night though true oh true yeah 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 no it's uh sam knows how to do autopsies that's interesting yeah he knows how to take the skull off yeah and uh, I'm on record, Chrissy, as being against any time any movie or anything wants to show me a needle or a scalpel or anything like cutting into or penetrating skin. And that goes for this Q-tip and the wraith thing or whatever. Yeah. Like, or I'm, like pointy I'm, I'm, jabber. I'm happy. There's not many times in my life when I'm happy that I can't see out of my left eye but like anytime i'm in a movie and that happens i just close my good eye and then it's like everything's blur- <laughs> blurred out so i can't really see oh. it and like, and like i can see oh, it no. but it blurs it enough to where it's like that it's really the detail of it especially like a scalpel slicing skin to me gives me the heebie-jeebies more than mm. anything mm-hmm. oh my mm-hmm. gosh the q-tip into the hole really gave me the heebie-jeebies yeah and that's what i mean it's like the same effect it's that it's when they put that in there it's like ugh, stop (laughs) yeah it's real gross um but i'll tell you what else is gross the nurse comes in and she's like what are you two boys doing in here and dean pulls down his pants pulls down his pants and shouts pudding and wiggles his junk all around to which you hear smacking sounds (laughs) <laughs> whoever the foley artist is in this episode had a real field day yes they did <laughs> so that's your shot or your double drink pudding also one of the uh best uh supernatural gifts or memes all right so they go back to milton and he's like okay i think it's a wraith you can kill it with silver but they can pass as humans. Uh, uh, so it could be any Tom, Dick, or Sally in here. But they show their true form in a mirror. So they have to check everyone out in the mirror. Uh, Dean Shrink comes up to talk to him. And he sees her in the mirror. And she's, uh, she's, she's not the wraith. She's clean, he says. Why not let someone else hunt these monsters, she says. She asks him, how many people do you have to save? All of them, Dean says. It's an apocalypse. We have to save everybody. And the shrink is like, that's just such a crushing weight on your shoulders. Whether or not it's true, how do you, if you believe it's true, how do you even get up in the morning? And Dean's a little bit like taken aback uh, by that. I don't He's know. like, I don't know. Yep. Um, okay, so Dean sees the doctor as the wraith. The main doctor who's been uh, sort of supervising them the whole time. And they plan to attack him. Uh, Martin can't help. Oh, oh, they pl- As they're planning to attack him, the girl who came up and kissed Dean before comes up and kisses Sam. Mm-hmm. So take another drink. And she goes, I want him now. He's larger. Chrissy, I will say, even though I've seen this episode probably a couple times now. Or maybe just the one. But, I, but I'm pretty sure I've seen it a couple times. I still, even this time, was like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's the girl that kisses them. And then I was like, nope. Nope, it's not. And I'm like, not. oh, wait, it's the doctor. No. Well, I knew it wasn't the doctor. But, like, I just, like, forgot who it was. And so it was, It's even mm-hmm. this time around, was, like, still fun to be like, wait, who is it again? Who is it? Who is yeah. the wraith? Yeah. It's a real mystery. Because I really did think it was the girl smooching him. Yeah. Well, she's she's a big red herring. She's Great a big red smoochy, herring. Great smoochy red face herring. red herring. Yeah. Martin won't help them because he's too scared. He's like, I'm useless, you guys. I can't help you. So they get their keys and they look for the doctor. Sam gets to him and slashes him with the silver. He's fighting the orderlies. He's about to kill the doctor. And Martin stops him and says, look, it's not him. It's not him. It's The silver is not burning his skin. Something went wrong. It's not him. So uh, they stop fighting the doctor. Sammy gets all drugged up. He's like, I'm awesome. And Dean is like trying to figure out. He's like, what's up? How did it trick us? Why did it trick us? And Sam is like, 
maybe you finally cracked Dean and they have a little, a little, uh, they show a little chink in their armor of yeah. that things are starting to get to them. This is a big crazy talk. Yeah. Uh, the shrink is like, are you still hunting that wraith? Uh, you can't save anyone, Dean. And she sort of turns mean. She's like, you couldn't gank Lucifer. All you do is fail. And see, Dean starts to get upset. And the orderly is like, settle down. There's no one there. And the shrink says, I'm not real, Dean. I'm in your head. You're going crazy. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. Big reveal. The shrink, the hot shrink was all in his head. It's and like then- Shutter Island, which came out a mere... One year before this episode. <laughs> this is this came out in 2010. Yeah, I think Shutter Island was like 2009. So suddenly, Dean is looking in the mirror and everyone looks like the Wraith. So he's starting to freak out. Meanwhile, Dean, or Sam is in with the doctor and he's like, I'm really sorry. I thought you were a monster, but I've had a moment of clarity. There are no monsters. And every time someone says monsters, it's someone saying... Uh, I thought you were a monster, but I know there are no monsters. So that's Mm -hmm. when you get the monster monsters. Mm -hmm. Drink, drink, drink. The doctor is like, you're barely even human, my dude. If there's one more outburst, you'll go to a different place with higher security and they won't treat you as kindly as we do around here. And Sam's like, yeah, no, I'm cool now, man. I get it. There's no monsters. I just want to be chill and like get my mental health right. And the doctor's like, okay, well, we'll give you another chance. Which is like bold. Bold of that doctor. Yeah, he did try to kill him. Yeah. He just lets Um, him go and be like, all right, let bygones be bygones. Which then Sam ruins immediately. Sam ruins it immediately. Yeah. (laughs) Sam goes to Dean and Dean is like, the problem is you, Sam, you've killed all of us. And Sam goes crazy. He's having delusions in the day room and he's fighting with no one and he's slashing and swinging. And Dean is just cowering in the corner. Uh, And so Sam, of course, gets taken away again. Uh, Martin and Dean are together and Martin Dean is like, crazy is the glue. And what? Crazy is the glue what us freaking out has to be the monster what if it makes you crazy we got somehow infected which makes him think it was wendy the girl Mm -hmm. who slobbered all over both of them but they go check on wendy and guess what she she's been killed she's being killed by the wraith true it's the nurse the nurse from the very beginning who found them when they said pudding Mm-hmm. she's got this long skewer sticking out of her wrist and she's sucking the brain out of Wendy but Wendy is still alive so she obviously didn't get all the way to the brain they fight 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 Martin is like I'll stay with the girl and try and help her uh, uh, and I'll stay with the orderlies you go get the kill the wraith so the orderlies come in and they fight 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 Dean escapes uh, but he's all woozy. He's like tripping balls. He can't <laughs> see straight. He's falling all over the place. Um, he's following the blood trail, but he's way, way woozy. Uh, the wraith goes to where Sam is all tied up in a like a rubber padded room. And she like does a her Bond villain monologue. She's like, mm-hmm. this place is my personal five star restaurant. I suck the juice out of brains, and this place is full of brains that are all soaked in uh, cortisol and adrenaline and hormones. And she's like, she's like running her fingers down his forehead and then licking her fingertips. It's very gross. Yeah, it's good. She does a great job. She's creepy. Mm, she's very creepy. Uh, and she's about to skewer his brain when Dean comes in with his little silver letter opener. They fight, fight, fight. She is about to stab him with her skewer when Dean just in an unprecedented move, like who knew you could do this, grabs her skewer and just breaks it off. Ew. Right? Ew. She'd be less free and easy with that thing, I think, if she knew that it could just get broken (laughs) off. Right? Right? 
blood is like shooting out of out the of stump. It, yeah, props did a great job on that. They did. It's gross. Um, so as soon as he stabs her with the silver uh uh like letter opener, his crazy shivers go away. <laughs> And uh, they're not crazy anymore. Her power apparently dies with her. And he's just like, let's get out of here. And they just run away. As we discussed, they just hop out the window and run away back to the Impala. I can't, I couldn't believe I was like, they have to fight their way out. Nope. Nope. It seemed like a minimum security. Facility. Mm hmm. Uh, Dean does have a fun parting line where he says Tom Cruise was right. Shrinks are all nuts. Yeah, which is obviously like allusions to the um, Scientology and stuff that they believe that you shouldn't see psychiatrists. Yep, psychology is bad. Yeah. But we're not done yet. We've got to have a BM scene. Sammy's like, the Wraith was right. I'm so angry. I'm mad at everything. It's inside of me. I'm mad all the time. And Dean is like, so what? You're going to take all that. You're going to bury it. And you're going to forget about it. Because that's how we keep going. Are you with me? Are you with me? And <laughs> Sammy's like, yeah, I'm with you. We're all, okay. I was just trying to be heard. And he's like, well, too bad. Let's get out of here. And that's the end of Sam Interrupted. I think that like last scene um doesn't that come out like a few months before avengers oh does it i doesn't avengers come out in the summer of 2010 and this is like the hulk like my secret is i'm always mad mm-hmm. scene let's find out avengers oh 2012 still not for a couple of years then yeah 2012 so yeah they had the 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 hulk my secret is I'm always mad. <laughs> Stolen from Sam. <laughs> Stolen from Supernatural. Right. Stolen. Um. So how did our rules play out? Well, Chrissy, I can think of two that played out quite well. Yes, they did. <laughs> I think I might. I think I probably missed a bunch because I was taking so many notes. I was like furiously taking notes and counting drinking game rules. So apocalypse. Uh, how many times did you catch the apocalypse? I counted five times. I got six. Okay. Uh, a lot of these, but how many times did someone die? Three. Six. Someone dies six times. Yeah. Oh, the the person at the very beginning. Mm hmm. Uh, Ted. Ted. Wait, who is Ted? Wait, what? Ted is the other guy who's like, the monster is real. Oh, right, Ted, yeah. Then. Then Heidi. Heidi? I don't know. How did I get six? I don't know how you got six. Because the Wendy or whatever, she doesn't actually oh, yeah, die. Wendy. She doesn't die. I think I counted her as dead anyway. And then you have the the Wraith dying. I only got three. Okay, I don't know how I got six. <laughs> um, how many times did you count them saying monster? Eight. 18 times i only got 15 yeah i got 18 oh boy you got it you I got a bunch you, more than i, I bet did. you we missed some even yeah <laughs> um there's two smooches two smooches one time Sam does an autopsy one pudding one time that sam is awesome he's not just awesome chrissy he's <sighs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, how many crazies did you count? 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. We only got 10, and we honestly didn't even remember to start counting crazies till like halfway through the episode. <laughs> Yeah. And then we went tough. back and we're like, oh, I think it was in this scene, maybe, and then in this scene. <laughs> 
I forgot about crazy. And then, of course, the one gank. You couldn't gank one him. One gank. Couldn't gank Lucifer. Oh, boy. Sam well, interrupted. Game. Great game. Great episode. Again, I think it's a I think it's a classic episode. I, love I agree. It. It's a super fun one. Oh, we should say the names of all the guest stars. I have them pulled up here. I had them pulled up. John Grease as Martin. Uh, okay. Yeah, you do them because I had them pulled up and now I don't. Malcolm Stewart as Aaron Fuller. Michelle Harrison as Erica Cartwright. Uh, Juan Reedinger as Ted. And then it also lists Laura Gilchrist as Jay Foreman and Gwenda Laurenti as Susan Fletcher, but specifically John Grease as Martin. As Martin. He's yeah. so good. He's like instantly likable and believably crazy. And you, you instantly feel like he's been on this show for years. Yeah, like he really the, feels uh, like he fits in well with the boys. Going to the point of like you could show someone this episode and be like, "Oh, so what's that guy's backstory?" You're like, "I, I don't know. He's literally he's in never this been episode. here before, and he'll <laughs> never be here only, again." But he's it. <laughs> yep. But he's so good, and they give him so like I, as been documented. I've been watching old Law and Order episodes, and it's so funny the amount of like makeup and costume they give to a like random person. They just interview on their way to whatever perp or whatever whoever they're going to actually go after versus when you see someone who's definitely going to come back in this episode and be in this episode <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's just, they might as well have like a spotlight behind them it's like oh. yeah. <laughs> like a little halo yeah it's so funny just like the amount of the level of of uh just makeup and costume that go into those roles versus the little peon roles at the beginning and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I just crack up so that's kind of what that's what this reminded me a little bit of is like this guy feels like oh we might get him back again this is a this is a donna like a jody I know, mills we should have we should have gotten him back i feel the same way about the girl in providence yeah oh yes oh great miss justice is that she doesn't come back ever yeah, they're letting Great these. Misjustice. And I guess Ugh. it's a mark of a good show when you have so many side characters that you wish would come back. True, true. But then, like, but then they do so many things with side characters that I'm like, ugh. Like, what's his butt from Men of Letters, the British guy? I'm like, oh I yeah, he's around for him. like three whole seasons. Yeah, I'm like, I could, I didn't need him. <laughs> didn't like him. Never liked him. Yeah, like the I actor's agree. fine, but like, yeah, yeah. Um, the whole, Chrissy, the whole oh wait, British Men of Letters is like a walk is Ugh. like a shade too far for me it's probably i i don't know if i dislike the men of the british men of letters arc or apocalypse world arc the least i i don't know which one rubs me the wrong way the most but i would say those are probably my two least favorite arcs in the whole show or like those two like I'd take Dick Roman and Leviathans. I need like, I mean, that's like the sweet spot. I love Dick Roman and Leviathans. Those are, those are the, that's the sweet spot of the show. And that's, it is like, you can't beat those middle seasons really. And you're never going to like, anyone's ever going to come across like Crowley or Rowena. Like there's just so many great, even early on, like Ruby is one of my favorites. Like, I Mm -hmm. think there's some good stuff or good. Meg. And that needs to be, that's going to be the next season, Chrissy. We just got to do the side character episodes. That uh, we love. That we love the most. Uh, but that is not what I chose for our next episode, Chrissy. Okay, what did you choose? We are fast forward. We're going to go way forward in time. Okay, I'm choosing I'm a newer episode. Season 13, episode 6. The title is Tombstone. Okay. This is a cowboy episode. It is a cowboy-ish episode. Okay. It's very funny. It's a great episode. Um, so here are the rules. Uh, okay. First of all, all rules for this game, Chrissy, are doubled for this whole episode. Every okay. Everything that is once was would be one drink is two drinks and so forth. Because the boys, they're staying in a themed hotel room. Yay! Yeah. 
themed hotel room. Uh, we're taking a drink for bro hugs. I love not, a bro sm- hug. not smooching, but some bro hugs. Uh, anytime some Western music plays. Oh, you always do music, and it's so I hard for me. Know. I get so lost in the episode, and I forget the musical cues. This one, I feel like they're very obvious. Okay. I feel like they're, they're, they don't come around too, too often. I think they're pretty obvious. Um, Dean geeks out. Okay. Uh, we're taking a shot, or we're drinking double or quadruple, since it's a double episode, uh, for I'm Your Huckleberry. Uh, we're now, taking... now I want to watch Tombstone. <laughs> I actually told Abby, I was like, we should watch Tombstone. Like, I love Tombstone. It's great. It's an awesome movie. Um, we're taking a drink for uh, whenever we get Hunter Jack. So okay, we're getting love. Jack in this episode. And then and then I, I felt like there weren't enough drinks. So just anytime someone dies, we're doing the classic someone dies. Uh, okay. uh, take a drink. So uh, that's the rules for season thirteen, episode six, Tombstone. Perfection. It I can't wait. Is a good episode. I remember. I definitely remembered it because, like, it's basically at the point of the show when I started like watching live mm-hmm. with the show, and I was no longer just like catching up on streaming. I was actually live. So. Um, yeah, I I enjoy it quite a bit. So I'm excited to talk about it with you next time. Yes, I'm excited too. So let's talk for a minute about how fun it would be if you were a member right now. Ooh. If you were a member of this podcast, how fun would it be? Um, you would get to hear this episode a week early. It would be totally ad free. Oh. You get some extra special bonus content. And not only that, you get access to the whole member library at True Story FM. So you wouldn't just be getting access to talk about Gank That Drank and Supernatural. You'd be able to talk about uh, my other podcast, the most excellent 80s movies podcast. You'd be able to find out about the film board, movies we love, Sitting in the Dark. Uh, the Schwashbuckling Ladies Adventure Hour, um, all the brilliant and wonderful podcasts that True Story FM has to offer. So it's really great to be a member, don't you think? I would think. And it'll only cost you five bucks a month. It goes to help support our show, and we really appreciate it. So if you're here with us at the end, you know, obviously you're into the show. Or you just have it on autoplay and you're... (laughs) You fell asleep. And you fell asleep. (laughs) Or you're too far away from the skip button or whatever the situation is. Consider becoming a member and supporting our podcast. It means so much to us and it helps us to uh, uh, stay encouraged and keep going. Uh, Team free will, baby. Yeah. Nate, where can people find us and support us in the real world? They can find us and support us in the real world at the real neighborhood comedy theater, which is just the neighborhood comedy theater. I don't know if there's a fake one or someone trying to impersonate us out there, but um, an online one, maybe. I don't think so. So I just in downtown Mesa, Arizona. Uh, and you can find out uh, where how to get there and how to get tickets and what shows are going on by going to NCT Phoenix dot com. That's N is in Nike ctphoenix.com uh yeah chrissy or in as a neighborhood <laughs> or in as a neighborhood true c I is in comedy and t is, is in comedy. theater t is in theater um or just think of maybe your like second favorite k-pop band yeah because that's who when you're we over can't bts we literally cannot overcome the seo monster that is k-pop because like if you look up nct it's like it's like nct 127 is the name of the group and they are like every search result yep yep sometimes Uh, we're trending and i wonder why and it's because they're doing something yep exactly Uh, at least that's not our address if that was like our address 127 something we'd just be done We'd have to we'd have to change our initials. 
Yes, indeed we would. <laughs> We'd have to become the uh, community <laughs> comedy theater. Exactly. CCT. Uh... Um, okay, so thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you so much. And when you're out there in the real world, saving people and hunting things, you know, the family business, keep the gank that drank motto in mind. Be excellent to each other and party, party on, on dudes. dudes.